everybody. Today, I'm going to be recording a piece of piano music. Now, the idea being that this is for me to release uh, under my, I, I want to say pseudonym, but it's not. It's under my name, Richard Prynne. Uh, well, I've got some social handles of Richard Prynne Piano Music or Richard Prynne Piano, because obviously <laughs> I have this channel, which is Richard Prynne, uh, which is where I don't put the music. Confusingly. I know it's confusing enough for me. So that output of my music is soft or oh, relaxing cinematic piano with a slight hint of sadness. So I've got my logic file loaded up today. The plan is to produce a piece of music that's about two minutes long, maybe a little bit longer. And for those of you who have done my cinematic piano courses, I will be using a lot of those things that I use in those courses. But I want you to walk you through the whole, whole process. So the mood I want is slightly sad and cinematic feeling. Now I am using, for this type of stuff, I would normally record on my piano, but I don't have a piano at the moment. So I'm going to be recording it here in Logic using the free memoir Grand, which in my opinion is the best free piano there is. It's absolutely excellent. By Audio Ollie, that is. Uh, I would normally default to Spitfire Soft Piano or Felt Piano, their, their uh, Spitfire Labs piano. Um, but in this instance, I wanted something a little bit more grand sounding. Not so much sort of intimate felt, although this is still intimate felt. So I'm going to default to my favorite key or one of my three favorite keys, which is A minor. So the way I'm going to approach this is I generally pick a chord sequence first, or at least, you know, pick the mood, sad-ish, uh, pick the chord sequence. So I'm in minor, obviously. So one of my favorite things to do is go from the minor one, in this case, A minor to uh, major sixth, flat major sixth which in this case is F. So we've got going from A minor to F, which I, I love that it because the F lifts the minor. And we use this a lot in training music as well. It's one of the most, one of the most used chord progressions because it has the sadness and the seriousness of a minor key, but it has the lift of a major key because of that flattened major sixth, which is awesome. So, I want this to be quite simple and understated and soft. So I'm going to go with something like that. And because at the moment I'm just stating my left hand A and E, which is the first and the fifth, I'm going to put the third, the minor third that is, in the right hand. And then I'm going to go down to the F and land on the third in my right hand again. Something like that. Okay, there we go. <laughs> That's the winner. Now, my approach to writing melodies is always, think of it in terms of simplicity first. It, is it simple enough to sing? Do, 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 do. Yes, easy, done. Because, and also the things I don't like having huge leaps in my melodies, and that's not necessarily a good thing that I don't include them, but that's just a personal preference. You know, obviously John Williams uses octaves, minor sevenths, and all sorts to make his kind of hero heroic and romance themes, you know. Is that an octave? It's a major seventh, isn't it? Think of Superman. Yeah, Superman, Major Seven. Okay, here we go. Anyway, enough about John Williams, although he is a legend. Now, let's uh, think about the tempo. One, two, three, four. Da, 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 da. Too fast, 105. Do, 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 95. Mm. I'd love to say that I'm in that stage of my career and expertise where I can be like, boom, that's clearly 87 BPM. But I'm not. <laughs> I still have to do this. Do, do, do. 
Yeah, that sounds about right, doesn't it? Now I'm going to record my first like that that idea first, and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to sculpt it into an entire track. Let's go. <laughs> Always part of the process. Start with I forgot one of my golden rules, which is start with a stripped down version of your idea, which in this case is the left hand. Oh my gosh, I am tired today. There we go. I'm not gonna state the, the full progression. I'm actually not gonna quantize this hugely. I mean, if I do, it'll be strength 50. Cause I still want it to feel human. I might quantize that first one though. There we go. There we go. So that's the that's the first statement of the idea. This do da 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 da. Oh, by the way, I've called it day at home. My daughter's off sick today, so I thought I'd call it day at home with her. Well, not with her because she's in the other room, but day at home because she's having a day at home. Okay, right. Now let's record the actual melody idea. Two, four. <laughs> How many false starts am I gonna have today? So many. Okay, so let's do it again, same thing again, quantize that, 50. Now this is where I don't think I, I mean, I hear what I'm going to do next, but I can't play it. Um, I mean, it would be really nice to have like... Something like that underneath. And this is the thing about my piano course and the way I've always taught piano is you don't have to be able to play this to write it. And that's what's crucial. Uh, I'm not a pianist by trade. I have practiced and played the piano for a long time, but. I'm a guitarist, first and foremost, and these days a terrible guitarist, but, you know, neither here nor there. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is, this is kind of a statement of the full melody, I believe. I might change that, that ending. So I'm going to copy and paste that, and I'm going to put that there. I want to be able to state the melody in a, in a simpler way. So I'm going to take that out. And what we're going to do is we're going to take notes out so that it becomes like a a memory of the original melody. So even just taking that note out helps. I mean, I wonder what it sounded like if I took that last note out. Ba, 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 ba. Nice, I like that. It sounds good when I don't hear the whole thing. And that also plays into this last note being more restrained. I wonder what it would sound like if I took out the either the second or the third note. So it's like do or even the first note. One of these notes. So do do do. Yeah, let's take out the first one. Like that. It might be too long a pause. Oh, 
No, I like that. Maybe here I actually need a statement, uh, the root to be stated again. Ah, I know what I'm going to do. Put it up an octave. No. Doesn't need it. Doesn't need it. Cool. Okay, so now I'm just going to tweak a couple of things. Some of these are a bit quiet. So I'm just going to lift these up a touch. In fact, I could probably lift all three of these up too. I mean, it's okay that it's quiet because you, I don't want it to be overpowering. That one's too loud. There we go. And this is the thing, when you don't when you can't play it the way you want it to sound, you just have to do these tweaks afterwards, and that's okay. It's not cheating. It's not cheating. I wonder what happens if I do this. Oops. Nice. That's the, that's the business. Okay, now, the other thing... Because what I'm doing is I'm repeating what I'm doing here at the end here. The other thing with writing music for the piano and writing music in general is just do what I've done. Just ask yourself this, what would happen if I did this? With I mean, this is the wonderful thing about MIDI is you can just do all of the same thinking and the thought process in front of you and it doesn't matter if you make a mistake or it doesn't sound as good as you thought. Yeah, I think it actually still needs that that first note for sure. Definitely there anyway. Yep. So that when we go into the full thing here, it should sound a lot more cohesive, a lot better. There is another trick I'm hopefully going to show you in a sec. Let's just raise these up a little bit. The melody notes should be the louder ones. You cheeky little monkey, you. There we go. Let's put these up. That one's a, not necessarily a not not necessary an, un, an unnecessary note. There we go. There we go. Nice. Okay. I'm just altering that ending. So we're actually at 50 seconds. We're almost halfway through the track. And I've only really just stated my full idea. That's okay. I might shorten this. Oops. That's, that is the problem with quantizing. Uh, so let's take... There we go. Let's take you out. And let's half, let's half the length of that. Because... If the track's only two minutes, we don't want people to wait for a long time. Not so sure about the ending there. Now, at this point in time, we've got a couple of decisions to make. Do we continue with the same progression and just layer, or do we add in a new progression? Uh, what I mean by that is, do we add in, do we change the chords a little bit? Because at the moment, we're just like. Because 
because then we could go to a C. And then when we land on that, that A, what could we go to? Um, I mean, we could go back to the F. We could go to an <laughs> We could do that kind of cheeky, let's throw in the perfect fifth. Which might quite might work quite nicely. I mean, I love this chord progression. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> so we're gonna take this progression and we're gonna move we're gonna play this. This bit's gonna go to an a C. Um Actually, wait, sorry. It's going to be, this bit's going to go to a C. So we're going to extend the progression a little bit, rather than just two chords. And then there we go. So... And then here... Right here, what do we do? Now, we're going to land back on a C in the melody, so we do kind of want this last one to be either a B or a D. It doesn't have to be, uh, so we could just go into the suspension. This is and then it returns back. Okay, so let's just have a listen to that, see how it fits. What it needs is a fourth note. And that fourth note should be there. And I think we should climb to the D. There we go. Do, 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 do. And then return going from the D above C to the B below C really brings it in to that minor third back into the A. As you'll hear. So if I just put this here. Nice. Now, is there a cheeky little chappy going on here? No. Okay. Sometimes you get a duplicate note under there if I've done that. some cutting and pasting. Now, here's the other thing. I really like the register it's in, but what would happen if we dropped the register off the left hand? Because what, we, what we're trying to do here is, and this is what I do with all of my piano music, in fact, almost all of my music, full stop, is I want you to hear the same material but feel like it's a new thing. Oh, blimey. And what I mean by that is, I don't want to have to write anything new. Really, I've got my idea, and I just want this idea to carry the song, the piece of music. Does that work as well? Now, my question to you, my dude, or dudette, is why doesn't it work so well? Well, one would assume that part of the thing that makes this work so well is the interaction of the proximity of the notes here between the, the fifth and the melody. So you're still working within a tenth. So you've got the one, five, ten, always going on. And that movement of the, of the sixth between the fifth and the third uh, works really nicely. Whereas here, the in the interaction is the interval between the notes is so big that it stops working in the same way. So what happens if I do this? Because there's actually no reason why this couldn't be played in the right hand just itself.
which it could. So, and I like that. One thing I don't like is this feels quite stranded. So let's track in an octave and see what happens. No, it doesn't work. It might not work at all. No. Now the other the other option is that we throw in an octave and the the left hand's just doing my favorite, which is just need to alter this as well and throw in the octaves. I like the octaves. They do feel a bit like bang, which I'm not so keen on. Duplicate this piano. Okay, that's awesome. Now, I've as, as you can see, I've duplicated the other piano because now I'm, I don't want to write anything more and I like this melody a lot. So what I want to do is add in another part, another piano part to maintain interest. So we're going to, we're in A minor, so A minor, F, C, G. So generally, we're going to be dealing with A and C for A and F the A chords A minor and F and then we're going to be dealing with G and C for the G chord for the C chord and then G and B so we can alternate between what those ones let's have a little fiddle around and see what we've got oh that click sounds so loud <laughs> so we've got uh Let's try it like that. Something simple like that. Is that right? It doesn't feel right. Would triplets feel right? Lovely, right? If you've seen my video on writing music for Philip Glass, you can see this is a trick he does all the time. He takes different rhythmic groupings and turns them into the development or turns them into the layers and, and that in itself makes it feel interesting. Right, let's, let's see if I can play it though. That wasn't so bad. So it's uh, eighth note triplets. Right, now let's just add in the sustain pedal because I'm just going to copy and paste this rather than have the pain of me, the pain to your ears of me <laughs> playing this again. I know I'm not that bad. But it's kind of fun to be self-deprecating sometimes isn't it and then so I've copied and pasted that because that will go over the F now I'm going to copy and paste it but this time I'm going to move that A down to a G so it fits over the C chord copy and paste and then here move that down to a B so it fits over the B chord Do I need it there? Do I need it there? That's the other important thing. So one thing I'm going to remember is don't throw away all of your magic tricks all at once. Uh, all of your, not magic tricks, but all of your. So what you'll notice here is this, this section here, I've got a change from the part melody to the full melody. And at the same time, I've introduced the lower octave, which I don't need to do because the full melody is coming in. 
And here, same thing, the four melodies coming in and then the bass is coming in and the chord changes coming in. So I don't need to introduce this yet. I can introduce this here. And then we will repeat that, except copy and paste it like that. And then we will be left with the part melody up an octave. Played a lot softer. I might just chuck in a fade. Why not? Right. I want to hear the whole thing. Uh, and then I've got a question for myself about the piano choice. For a second there right now what i've been feeling is this is missing some ambience this is one of my favorite ways to create ambience but i don't want it to get too muddy I want it to feel nice and wide, so I'm going to go into Imaging, Direction, Spread. So what I decided to do there was I felt like it was getting too muddy even though I'd cut the lows. So raise it up an octave and it works much better. 
By the way, that's a free plugin. Well, it's one of the best free plugins there is, I think. Valhalla Supermassive Reverb is so good. So good for effects and fun. So, oh, the other thing I forgot to mention whilst I was doing it. This is the one thing when I'm a bit sleepy, I forget to mention what I'm doing. So, PSP, uh, Vintage Warmer, I, I chucked on a very basic mastering chain here. Um, very basic. I've got Vintage Warmer and Master Plan, which, guys, is freaking awesome. Um, and what's the other one I wanted to chuck on? I do like the sound of the native instruments. Passive EQ. <laughs> right, let's go. Uh, Mastering Club. Just taking a bit of the harshness out. Okay, cool. I'm quite happy with this. I don't like that note. That note's been annoying me the whole time. I think I can afford to take this all down. I mean, do I take all of it down? Because actually it sounds really nice. Why is that cheeky little monkey just staying there? really nice that's the other thing I like I do tend to feel if I'm doing something like this I do tend to navigate towards the the more intimate sounding piano so this is the concert grand soft so I'm tempted to go for the warm felt just give it a try let's give it a try Sounds quite similar. Oh, <laughs> that's why. Oh, you, Richard. I I changed the piano sound of the FX channel. That's why I wasn't changing in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> A lot of pedal noise. Maybe too much pedal noise. Do I like the pedal noise? I think I like it, but let's try the grounds. Ooh. I quite like it. Do I like the warm felt? I think I've got an idea. So my, my issue here is that the, the melody lines aren't biting. And I like the pedal noise because it sounds like I'm playing it, which is one of the things, one of my favourite things. So what I'm going to do is, this is uh, one of my favourite things to do. I've got many favourite things to do, if you haven't already guessed. I'm going to join all of this together, and I'm going to switch it into the right and the left hand. So, oh blimey, that looks pretty daunting, doesn't it? Let's delete all of that stuff. And then here. So this here, oh, that melody looks very repetitive. I might have to adjust that. 
And then here, we're going to get rid of the melody lines. And there we go. So we've got here, we've got the That's better. Let's see. Here. So, yep, yeah, I like that already. It's sounding a bit better. Some of those notes are jumping out too much, like that one. I mean, I could apply a limiter. Where does it? Where does it bite? Let's hear the. Around 100. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put a limiter on it. Uh, MIDI effects, <sighs> velocity processor, limiter on threshold is gonna be one oh five. Let's try 100. Actually, no, 97. Yeah, I like this. Also, I like the warmth of those lower those lower notes. Mmm, a bit too bright there. Again, here, do we apply the velocity processor, the limiter, to this one? Yeah, we do. And now we can afford to even just be a little bit like, we're just going to chuck this a little bit to the right. As if it's the piano right in front of us. Okay, this is getting good. This is sounding good now. Although, again, the issue I'm having here is that's now biting too much because I've, I've swapped out the piano. So let's try this on the warm felt and see what that sit, how that sits. That's better. Now, the other thing, to stop it getting... So we've got three layers of this warm felt now. I'm just going to chuck in a couple of single band EQs so that we don't have a huge amount of low end building up. We just want it in the left hand, basically. Okay, now let's look at this melody. It's a bit too repetitive for me, which which actually is saying something, because I love repetitive stuff. So we've got... Then this is the first iteration of the main melody. There we go. Now here, should we chuck in the nav? Or we could do, do, do. Uh, If we're going up to the F, I kind of want this to feel different. So we've got do, do. There we go. Then we can return back to the normal melody. Because we've got different chords, we can get away with it. 
here we go. And then this is the bit where I'm going to go back up to the F, but I'm going to leave it here on the C, perhaps. In fact, maybe I'll put this one on the E. And the first time we hear it, it's down here, we'll put this down to the C. And then here, so da 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 There we go. We've now got all the other stuff going on. Nice, I love that when you get that in a sample live where you can hear the kind of like naffness of the piano, it's great. Let's just raise these up a little bit because I feel like they're a little bit too soft, some of these. Except for that cheeky little man key. Here we go. <laughs> I've got also got an idea here as well. So where's the, it's here, isn't it? Do we just chuck that up an octave as well? Just so it bites through that much more. Album. There we go. Too tinkly. Right, actually, I'm going to see what... Is that the top? Two octaves. Impossible to play, but... Okay, right, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have it doing that, but I'm not going to play every note. We'll just double this one. Great, right, because that way it gets rid of that kind of like fuzzy tinny sound in the sample. one more element. I think it just needs like a, a drone, basically. Uh, you know, just a an eerie drone. And then I think I'm done. Right, let's go into my pads. Photosynthesis. I remember the day. Don't 
Does it need that one or this one? I'm going to layer the chords with 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 layer the pa layer the piano chords with pads because I think that sounds really sweet. Just start with the drone. comes the chord change by the way. Get, get ready. Happy. Okay, I'm not going to play that again. <laughs> yes, I am happy with this. I'm going to go full on quantize 500%, 100 on quarter notes. Now, it's there. One, two, three, four. That's where I need to chop it, isn't it? Now I'm doing this just so I can copy and paste. Boom, there we go. And this, I'm not sure it needs it at the end. Now, the last thing to do is create automation. Ooh, volume fade out and main output. Now, it's going to be good that I'm doing this as well because of this Valhalla Supermassive. Lasts forever. Oh, no, I should just have it. Oh, I should just have it properly fading out, shouldn't I? Rather than like fading out. After the fact, select you and move you to there. See how that fade out again. Right, I'm saving that. Right, we're going to take this down just a touch. I am happy with this, and I've already got my mastery chain on there. I mean, I know what you're thinking, Rich, but it's not slamming. You know, I can check it up here, as you could know. I'm happy with that one more ever so slightly small change it is because I've copy and pasted this this one being 
ever so slightly late like the others. I'm just going to change the emphasis here so that when we have these, it doesn't sound unnatural. That's better. There we go, that's much better. Just a tiny little shift and just quant quantizing them differently. So it kind of the two fingers, <laughs> two octaves apart, land on different places. There we go. And now... A lovely, slightly sad, probably really sad, cinematic piano track. Done. See you in the next one.